Hello YouTubers! I wanted to go and tell a, bit, a little bit about my new straight key that I got here on eBay. Um, so first of all, this is a J37, and of course it's a, an, an antique pretty much, or vintage at least. Uh, the J37 is... I'm not going to give the history because I don't know the history about it, but what I'm going to say about this is everything that I, I thought, it's better than I thought. Um, as First of all, I bought this at, on eBay for about... 25 20 25 dollars plus shipping you know it ended up being over 30 um and it was cracked somewhere in here there's a crack and that's fine that's actually a good thing because it made it cheaper uh anyway that was disclosed in the in the uh agreement okay so what did i do it did not come with a base and i saved even more money with that and what i did was because this is this is what i wanted was a key that just worked I just wanted a key that worked, and I'm not trying to um, restore history here or anything. Um, this does exactly even better than what I thought. So what I did was I took a piece of wood, I actually cut two pieces off and made it kind of fit. Um, I'm really, really happy with this. I love the patina. I love the look. It looks kind of old. Um, this, of course, is totally ghetto. I could have painted it. I could have sanded it, but I didn't want to. I wanted something that worked. That's all I wanted. Something that worked. Something that was kind of reliable. Um, honestly, this thing right here, it has more quality than this. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But, so far what i found is, um, of course, um, in an audio cable, you have three wires. There's the ground, and then the right, or the positive and negative. And um, it's pretty easy to set up. You just got to splice this. Right here, I have some tension relief. So uh, I decided the easiest way to, I couldn't go underneath with it, so I went to the side. I just took a screw and then a washer, and I'm just pinching that in there. So, so if you pull on this right here, you see, no problem. Tench, this, this right here is very weak. So yes, I, this is totally ghetto. I get it. It's ugly as hell, but guess what? It works, and it works very well. Um, I really like the idea of the straight key because it is just so raw. You know what I mean? It is just so, I don't know, earthy. It's just very you and the machine. That's all it is. It takes it takes some skill to use. And um, I don't know if I'm a natural or not, but I, don't, I think I'm doing pretty good with it. Now, if I were to take... So I have... Uh, I wanted to talk about the iambic key here for a minute and the differences that I noticed... And just so you know, this video is is about a newbie to straight key. I've been using the I have been using iambic since I started. It just seemed totally natural. It just seemed totally natural to start with something that has dits and daws that are already made out for you. These dits and daws are perfect. Those are perfect. You don't have to worry about them. But over here, you do have to worry. You have to worry about the length, and we'll get to that in a minute. But so it was totally natural for me to start out with this, but this particular key, which happens to be the Vibroplex, I do not like it at all. And the number one reason right here is, look at that. Where am I going to put my strain relief on there? Where am I going to put my... See that? There's no strain relief. So every single time I pick this up, I have to hold it very carefully. I don't know how I would even do strain relief with this. See how... I even have some shorts going on right now. If I if I, this wire is the wrong direction, it will short out and stop working or start beeping on its own. Okay, so that's the number one reason why I don't like it. Guess what? Here's another reason. Now, I'm exaggerating, but did you notice? It's not heavy enough. So what did I do? I ended up uh, developing a habit of holding it like this. I end up a habit of holding it with my left hand, which leaves this hand unfree to do anything. So I always have to do that. Otherwise, guess what? It slips. And as soon as it slips, it screws you up. This thing is not heavy enough. All right. Now, the third thing I don't like about this key is these will drift on you. So you'll get them dialed in just right. And then you'll practice for a while. And guess what? Click, click, click. It, skits, it drifts on you. And it, so there's three things, reasons why I don't like this particular key. Do not buy this key. I'm telling you, don't do it. In fact, you'd be better off as a new ham, and this is probably $140 too. This is the first Iambic key, the first key, decent key that I ever bought. This right here at $20, $30 without the base is better than that one. I can tell you already. Now, number one, 
I noticed right off the bat, this isn't going to drift on me. Now, I need some weight back here. Grant, granted, I need some weight, but that's something I could add. I could add some weight. But because of the downward pressure, it's not going to drift on you. That's a big advantage to the straight key. Now, of course, there is a disadvantage that you have to have a lot more skill to use it. Um, but, okay, so what I did here was it did not come with the base. I recommend you buy a base unless you want yours to look as ugly as this one. Um, I just used some silicone glue and glued it down. Like I said, I needed something that worked. I wanted a straight key that worked. I didn't care how it looked. I wanted something that worked that I could use and test and play with. And that's what I got here. All right, so to adjust this, I found I, at first I put this real tight where it just barely, and I realized I kind of like a little bit of space in there where I can tap. Okay, so that's what I've got to say about that. All right, so the J37, whatever this is, I really like it. Um, it is, it is for what it is and the price and everything, it is wonderful. I also just love this old school feel to it. All right, so now if I turn the radio on, and I'm going to do a test. All right, first of all, here's what we're going to do. Just to show that I'm not cheating and speeding up the camera on you. I'm going to show you what I've been practicing and how good I've gotten on the iambic key. So I'm going to do my alphabet at roughly 30 words per minute. Which is even faster than that. I can go even faster than that. So I've been practicing the alphabet. It's just something fun that I just kind of do. I, ha I have this by my desk and my computer. And now I'm going to try to go through the alphabet as fast as I can using the ambit key based on um, the, the practicing I've been doing. Now I'll tell you, it took me a while to do this because I've gotten so good at the alphabet that I actually know the next letters on memorization. You know how you listen to a song and the next song comes and you know what it's going to say before it even starts? That's something that I've, I've gotten to at this point doing the alphabet um, that's taken a long time. So it, if you can't do this right away, it takes a while. I'm just going to say that. You almost kind of memorize the pattern. So let's do the alphabet at something like 30 words per minute. Okay, so that was pretty good. I can go even faster than that. Um, you notice how I have to hold on this because the damn thing wants to move on me, and that is a very bad thing for a key. That's why this sucker needs to be heavy as hell. This is heavy, but it's not heavy enough. All right, let's try to go a little bit faster. All right. Now, and in that case, I also was using, I've gotten pretty good at the iambic letters, which would be like, instead of doing R like this, well, let me slow down. Instead of doing it like that, you do it like this, which is the old way or the bad way to do it is one, two, three. And in the way you're supposed to do it is two. One, two, three. One, two, three. Q, Q is the same way. It's like this. Instead of doing it like this, you go. All right, now all of that aside, that's just kind of a comparison to show you where I'm at. Now, we're going to slow way down when I do the alphabet here. Now, I'm going to do the alphabet using the straight key after uh, literally like no practice. I've only had this a couple days. And l just listen and, and see if you can read this. Okay. We need a better angle on this, don't we?
Okay, so what I've, I've been doing is kind of imitating what I know to be right over here. So if I go, it's an imitation of that. So when I'm listening, I'm going, I'm literally imitating that sound rather than trying to time it. Does that make sense? I'm imitating what I know to be right because I do it so well on here and I know what it should sound like. So assuming I'm doing this right, hang on. I think the tendency is to make your DAWs too short using this. That's what most people would do right off the bat. It's just, you would normally just kind of do that because that's just what your hand wants to do. So you really have to kind of imitate what you know to be right. Now, in, in no way am I telling you that I'm good or that I'm an expert. I'm telling you that I just started this and this is my experience. This video is about my experience as a first time person with a key. I don't think I'm gonna try to make a cue so tonight. I've had a busy night and I'm pretty stressed out. I had to do some things after work. I'm gonna save that for the next video as my first straight key cue so. Meanwhile, tonight I'm gonna practice So what, another thought that I have as a newbie to this is that the dots, the dits, are really easy. You just do it as short as you can. A dit is as short as you can do it. A daw, though, is not. That's where it gets tricky. That's why your daws are so much harder. And, and if you listen to me, I'm not consistent. One of my daws might be a little bit longer than the other one. Let's do the alphabet again and see how I do as a newbie. Now the reason I did so poorly there is because I literally don't have the muscle memory that I have over here, which would be, hang on. This is literally like my muscle memory just doing it for me. Over here I have to think really hard. The tapping kind of throws me off too because I hear this tapping and it's different than the sound I'm hearing. So maybe I should tighten it up. So to tighten it up, by the way, this end can go down. Obviously it takes way more skill to do this. Um, I just wanted to share, you, share with you my very first feelings. This key is really awesome. The price to quality ratio is amazingly good. The price to quality ratio here is not so good because yes, it will get you by. Yes, it's got some quality. Yes, it's pretty good. But I don't like it. This, like I said, the tension relief, the, the fact that it moves on you. Uh, I have to create some of the kind of bass and it's metal, so what am I gonna do? It's just not that good a key. This, on the other hand, for its price, is a great way to get started. Now, assuming that this had plenty of weight on it, I wouldn't have to hold it with my other hand. But I still have to do that. Anyway, I hope you like this. I just wanted to give you my first impressions of a straight key. You know, you can do all kinds of things with a straight key like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with a message. And uh, type 73 if, if you can understand what my message is. Okay, this might be kind of funny. All right, here we go. I'm going to send you with a final message. All right.
Okay, so if I did good and you, you all agree, I would say the jump from this to this is not that bad. Either that or I've got pretty good hand-eye coordination. I would say that as long as your dots are long, or your dits and daws, your daws are long enough, you're going to be heard. But I think the tendency is for most people to rush them. And then they start to sound similar. So just make sure your daws are pretty long. Let me slow it down.